What's up guys? I'm Mike from Mr. Lost Bike Shop and I'm back for episode 5 of Mechanic Mondays. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install a new fork in your bike. <laughs> F that wasn't funny. Who thought of this? Who thought of this? You're fired. F now we got to reshoot the whole video. Ah, oh, is the is the camera right? Turn it off. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to install a new fork in your bike. So in this video, I'm going to be installing a brand new Marzocchi Z1 in this brand spanking new transition patrol frame. So if you are upgrading a fork in your current bike, you will have to remove your old fork and all of the pieces of the headset besides the cups that are pressed in to your frame. And since this is a custom frame up build, we already do have the headset cups pressed into the frame. So that will be a different video, but that's where we're starting off with right now is a bare frame with the headset cups pressed in. I always recommend to lay out all of your headset spacers, have your stem ready to put on, and then all of your headset assembly laid out in the order in which that you need to install it. So first I'm going to grab the crown race because this is the first part that we need to install. So step one of installing a new fork is going to be installing a new crown race. The crown race is what the lower bearing sits on. If you don't have this on your fork, then your bearing is not going to spin. So this is absolutely mandatory. So what you're going to do is take a little bit of grease at the bottom of the steer tube, right on top of the crown of the fork. I also like to put a little bit kind of like right on here all the way on this flat part. So this uh, crown race has somewhere to sit against with some grease, just to prevent creaks, just being a little extra careful there. And you'll take your crown race, and drop it on. Before pressing on the crown race, you're gonna want to put the fork on not only a soft surface, but also a couple rags underneath the bottom of the fork, just so when you're pressing on the crown race, you're not gonna be messing up the rebound knobs or the foot nuts on the bottom of the axle. So I have this on top of a foam work mat, and then underneath the fork directly, I have a pretty thick rag underneath it just to make sure that it's got a soft place to sit on while I'm pressing on the crown race. I use an Ice Tools crown race press, which has two pieces right here. It's actually just a, basically a slide hammer, which slides right on the steer tube as a guide, and you'll slide hammer it down. When it starts to get really loud, then you know that it's on there, and then always visually check to make sure that it is flush all the way around. It's pretty hard not to get it flush the first time. Just give it a couple good smacks, and you should be good to go. Now that you've got the crown brace pressed on, you're just going to take your rag, clean off all the grease, on both the top and the bottom underneath on that little flat part to make sure that there's no leftover grease for dirt to attract to and build up on that grease. All right, so now we gotta get the steer tube cut. So the next step is going to be to mock up the fork in the frame with the headset in there and also the headset spacers and the stem. So my next step for you would be to check your manual with your headset and make sure that you know where every piece is gonna go. So the lower bearing is very obvious in the top bearing, but then you do have some stuff on top, like the top cap. There's sometimes some little washers that go in there, and then your headset spacers on top, but some people sometimes get confused with the orientation of the top cap. So make sure that you double check your manual and know where everything is gonna go before you cut your fork. The name of the game when it comes to cutting your steer tube when you're installing a new fork is to not cut the steer tube too short because that would be very bad and not have it overly long where it's kind of ridiculously long and you have like tons of spacers and it's also sort of dangerous because then you have a bunch of steer tubes sticking out on the top and it would probably hurt pretty bad to run into that. So you want to have just a little bit of space on top of the stem and also a little bit more space on the bottom of the stem when it comes to headset spacer gap because you wanna have a little bit of room to play around with your stem height. So my general rule of thumb, if you don't have a previous preference, would be to have 10 millimeters of headset spacers on the bottom and five millimeters of headset spacers on top. So I've got everything laid out here and I know that I want 10 millimeters of spacer on the bottom and five millimeters on top. So I have this thicker 10 millimeter spacer to go on the bottom ready and I have the five millimeter spacer ready to go on top of the stem. And I also got my stem handy Keep the 10 over here and the five over here so I know where those are going. 
And first step though is going to be put the lower bearing on top of the crown race on the fork. So now before sliding the fork into the frame, put the upper headset bearing into the upper headset cup. Slide that through and make sure that this lower bearing is seated into the lower headset cup. Now grab the next piece of your headset. This is the Cane Creek 40 series, which is very common. And I'm just gonna put this top cap assembly right on here. Generally these things are so tight because they have a seal on them that you can let go of the fork and it will stay placed, but be careful and make sure you kind of like loosely let off of the fork before completely letting off of the fork just to make sure it doesn't fall out of the bike. Then get your lower headset spacer, which is my 10 millimeter. I have my stem ready, put that right on top. And then the top five millimeter spacer, and that's all good. Don't worry about putting grease in the headset just yet because we're strictly just mocking it up so that we can get ready to mark the fork for cutting. Now that you got everything in place and the fork and headset and the headset spacers and the stem are all mocked up and in the frame, now you wanna do one last thing to double check before we're going to make a mark on the steer tube for cutting. So just put your hand on the bottom of the crown and then your other hand on top. Make sure that you twist everything together. Make sure that everything is seated fully because I have seen people at some point where they didn't have the lower bearing seated or they didn't have one of the spacers in all the way or something weird and it just wasn't all pressed together flush. So it ended up being not the right size and so they actually cut it and it ended up being too long, which is okay. Um, you'd rather have it too long than too short, but that just skips a whole step of having to fix things. So just make sure that everything is super tight in there and all seated together. Now while you're still holding it all nice and tight, you're going to grab something really sharp. I have these little dental picks that I use for a ton of stuff around the shop. Should be two perfectly straight scratch lines right on the steer tube. And then you can remove the fork from the frame. If the headset spacer that you're using on top of the stem is longer than five millimeters, then you don't need to worry about making that second notch underneath the top headset spacer. Since I always use a five millimeter spacer on top of my stem, I like to just make that second scratch line right on top of the stem because since it's a five millimeter spacer, halfway through that is 2.5 millimeters. So let's say that you're putting a 15 millimeter spacer on top or something. In that case, all you're going to wanna do is put one scratch mark on top of the top headset spacer and then cut about three millimeters shorter or below that mark so that your steer tube is shorter than the overall stack height of all of your headset spacers. The tool that you use to cut the steer tube is very important because if you don't use a quality cutting tool, then it's not gonna turn out as awesome as you'd expect. And forks are pretty expensive, sometimes upwards of $1,000. So be careful and definitely use the right tool for this job. You have two options when it comes to which tool that you'd like to use for this job. The first option would be a hacksaw and a cutting guide. But not only is this going to be more expensive, but more of a hassle than the second option, it doesn't always turn out perfectly straight. And you might need to spend some time at a grinder getting everything to be flush. So I would generally not recommend that unless you have a steel steer tube, then you would have to use that. But the only bikes that really have steel steer tubes are like touring bikes and whatnot. So I wouldn't really worry about the cutting guide and the hacksaw too much but I would recommend taking a trip down to a hardware store and getting one of these guys. They are known as either a pipe cutter or a tube cutter. They're pretty cheap. You can probably get one of these for about maybe 12 to $15 or so for a pretty nice one. I would recommend definitely getting like a name brand one because they do have a sharper blade and it's just going to overall have the nicest, straightest cut. And they're also way easier to use and it's going to pretty much always leave a perfectly straight cut. So take your pipe cutter Loosen it up and then place it on the steer tube. And then you're gonna wanna make sure that the cutting blade is right in the middle of the two etches that we scratched into the fork while we had it together. And then tighten up the pipe cutter and it'll stay right there and you can let off of it. Oops, we forgot to press record on this step. So I'll show you how to use a pipe cutter on this random old pair of handlebars. Now we just have to spin the pipe cutter to cut the steer tube, but there is a correct and incorrect way to use this tool. You need to spin it in the direction so that the knob is going towards the cutting wheel. So I have mine flipped this way, so I will turn mine clockwise. But if you have it flipped upside down, then you'll need to do it counterclockwise. Just make sure that you're turning the knob towards the cutting wheel. If you do it the other way, then it's going to just spiral up the steer tube and not make a cut. So we've got this tube cutter on here tight, 
Now just start spinning it. And every about two or three rotations, you're going to turn the knob clockwise to make it tighter. And you're going to see right on this line, it's going to start digging deeper into the steer tube and cutting the metal. And at some point, it's going to get really loud. And then you're going to know that it's really starting to cut through right there. Tighten it up a little bit more. Keep turning it and it pops right off and you've made your cut. So now that you've cut your steer tube, you'll probably notice that there's uh, quite a bit of an edge on the inside. It's kind of sharp on the outside, a little bit of an edge on the outside too from cutting. So now what we need to do is we need to get all of the edges and the sharp metal off of the top of the steer tube. So there's two ways to do this next step. You could either use a round file and just kind of file out the inside, which is a little bit more of a basic way, but I would highly recommend picking up a tool like this. It's got a swivel head and a cutting blade, and this is going to be awesome to have, not only for doing steer tubes, but you can also use the pipe cutter and this tool for cutting down aluminum handlebars. So I'd highly recommend having these two tools in your toolbox at home. Generally, this tool is right next to the pipe cutter at most hardware stores, and they're about the same price. They're only about $12 to $15. So it makes it a must have for me and I love using this tool, this thing's pretty cool. So you're gonna place this tool about parallel to the fork right inside of the steer tube. Turn it with a little bit of elbow grease. It's going to take off some shavings off the inside of the steer tube. The result will be a nice smooth chamfered edge on the inside of the steer tube. Now we have to file down the sharp edges on the top and the outside of the steer tube. So for this, you can use a grinder, but I'm going to assume that most people don't have a grinder in their garage. So I'm just going to use a flat file. It's actually kind of easier to use this than a grinder in some cases. I would highly recommend filing down the top and the outside of the steer tube with the fork positioned between your legs like this to hold it up with it kind of pointed down and away from you. So what this is going to do is it's going to make sure that all of the shavings and the filed down metal is going to fall just straight on the ground. Because if you do hold it up, and you do this, then all the metal shavings are gonna go directly onto your headset and possibly on your seals. So this is a little pro tip that I definitely recommend doing. Just keep all of the flakes of metal off of the fork. So now take your flat file and start filing down your fork. And then go around the outside, little by little, holding it at about a 45 degree angle. And as you file, feel it with your fingers to see if you missed any spots where there's an edge. Once the outside, the top, and the inside all feel smooth, then cutting the steer tube is completely done. Before the next step, let's just spray it down with a little bit of rubbing alcohol inside and out. And what that's gonna do is the liquid is going to grab all the little flakes of metal, and then take a rag and just clean it all up. Make sure there's no little flakes of metal floating around that it's gonna get in your headset and give you problems later down the road. I know that you're itching to put the fork in the bike, but we have one more step until we can do that. So we do have to pound in the star nut into the steer tube. And the star nut is this little guy, which is going to be the threads, which are going to hold the top cap down and therefore tighten up your headset. To pound in the star nut, there is one little specialty tool. I use the Park Tool TNS-1. These are fairly inexpensive, but you might not use it all the time. This is definitely something that's awesome to have if you're super serious about bikes and you're swapping things out a lot. So I highly recommend having one of those. It's going to last you pretty much a lifetime. But if you don't have this tool, there are some nifty ways to get around having it. Um, I have heard of some people using screwdrivers that fit through the star nut and then fit into the steer tube. And then you could just pound that in. I've heard of some people literally just using punches. I would recommend not getting too violent when you're trying to get crafty and install the star nut without a tool. I'm not gonna show you how to do it in like a different way because I'm a bike shop and I have a tool. So I'm going to show you the proper way to do it. Now go back to the same location where you press the crown race on where you have something soft to put the fork on. So I got my foam mat with a soft rag on top of it because we are going to do a little bit more pounding again. So grab your star nut and your setting tool of choice. I'm using the Park Tool TNS-1 and thread the star nut onto the setting tool. Just like that. Then take everything, place it right on top of the steer tube, grab a hammer, and lightly tap it in a little bit so that it starts to get set. 
you will notice that it might go in on a little bit of an angle, but when hitting it with the hammer from a little bit different direction, is going to kind of angle it incorrectly and get it in flush. So right now it's going in on a little bit of an angle, so I'll hit it from this side. And now you can see that it is directly parallel, very much vertical with the steer tube and lined up perfectly. So you're going to just want to give it a bunch of wax to get it in as straight as possible. It did go in a little bit crooked, so I'm just going to hit it from the opposite side until it's completely flush. Might take a couple times, but now it's perfectly flush. And now you're starting out to set and your fork is almost ready to be put into the bike. Now take the fork over to the bike and we're going to get everything ready for its final assembly. So pull that lower bearing off if you haven't already, and then also pull out the upper bearing from the frame. And now we are going to grab the grease grab a liberal amount of grease and apply it right to the top of the crown race. You don't need to use a ton, but definitely don't skimp. You just want it to cover everything very evenly. Now take the lower bearing and place it back onto the fork and set the fork aside. Now grab grease again and apply quite a bit, not a ton, but not a little bit to the inside of the lower headset cup. Now do the same thing to the upper headset cup, exactly the same way as you did to the lower headset cup. Make sure that you've got a nice even coat of grease on the entire inner surface where the bearing's going to sit. And then once you got that all greased up, just drop in your upper headset bearing. So now grab your fork and grab your grease. In the other hand, you're just going to want to apply one more even coat of grease to the inside of the upper bearing, then slide in the fork, get the lower headset bearing seated, and then start assembling your headset. So I got my top cap on, got the lower spacer, I got the stem, and you'll notice that there's a little bit of space on the steer tube sticking out on top of the stem, which means you did a perfect job. Then you put your upper headset spacer on top of there, and then grab your top cap and bolt, put a little bit of grease on the bolt, drop that right in there, tighten it up by hand. And once that's threaded in, you can let go of the fork. It's not gonna fall out or anything. Most likely it's gonna be a five millimeter on top. So just tighten up the headset just a little bit until everything is nice and flush. Then tighten up that top cap until it's just nice and snug. You don't have to worry about the final adjustment just yet because as we're just putting it together in the stand, we're just getting it ready to go. And once you do install the front wheel and install the handlebars in this case and put everything back down on the ground, then that's where you're going to do all of your final adjustments. You're gonna adjust your headset. You're gonna adjust the torque on the faceplate. You're also going to torque the pinch bolts on the side. So right now everything's gonna be kind of loose, but at this point, your brand new fork is installed on your bike and you're all finished. Well, there you have it guys. You've got a brand new fork installed on your bike. So now put everything else together and make sure that you go hit the trails and see how that brand new fork feels. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode of Mechanic Mondays. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you don't like this video, give me a thumbs down, but also tell me in the comments why you don't like this video so that I can continue to improve on them and make them exactly how you guys want to see them. But if you really like this video, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Until next time, live gnarly.